Hi, welcome to the Institute. My name is Richard Clarkson. I'm a reader in biosciences here in Cardiff University, and I work here at the Institute. So everybody who works here, uh, we all work on cancer stem cells. So I'm going to first of all introduce what a cancer stem cell is. So up until recently, we knew that tumors uh, in all their shapes and sizes are made up of hundreds of millions of cells. And until recently, we thought that the, each one of those individual cells was capable of forming a new tumor and continuing to grow. Recent evidence now over the past 10 or 15 years has shown that that's not necessarily true that perhaps only 1% of all of those tumors, uh, cells within a tumor are capable of regrowing into a new tumor. And this has completely changed the way that we look at how tumors grow, how they respond to therapies, and how we might treat them in the future. So it's very important now that we collect a large number of researchers together, all interested in this particular area of cancer research, and start to investigate exactly what a cancer stem cell is and how to treat it. And that's why we're here. So today you're going to follow me around with uh, this little red box. We've just collected a tumor sample from a hospital just about a mile away up the road in Cardiff. In here contains a tumor sample from a patient who just undergone surgery in the last uh, couple of hours. We're going to take this tumor sample now through to the laboratory and we're going to start processing it and looking at it under the microscope. So come and join me now. Okay, so here we are in the primary cell culture suite and uh, we've had a change of clothing here, protective clothing. This is important because we want to protect the tumor cells themselves from any contamination from bacteria or viruses. But we also want to protect the user as well from any potential viruses that the tumors might harbor. So the first thing we need to do is take the sample out of the box that we received from the surgical suites up at the hospital site. And this tube contains a small chunk of a patient's tumor that was taken up to three or four hours ago uh, sometime this morning, straight from surgery. So this piece of cancer tissue now goes into this cabinet, which is a sterile environment. And that protects the cells from getting contaminated, as I've said. What we want to do now is we're going to break up the tissue itself, mash it up and chop it up into small pieces, and then slowly disaggregate all of the individual millions of cells within that tumor lump uh, into their individual isolated cells, and then separate them away from the debris and put them into this flask. The media in this flask contains all the nutrients, salts, uh, amino acids, etc., that the tumor cells are going to need to grow. And once we've um, popped those cells into this media, we'll place this flask on its side into a, uh, the incubator over on the right hand side here at 37 degrees, which is the body temperature. And that's an environment now that the tumor cells really like to grow in. So at this point, we're really interested in, in growing the tumor cells some more, getting them back into a healthy state uh, and rapidly dividing. Because in that state, then, we can start to think about treating these cells and trying to think about new therapeutics and test new therapeutics. But the key question that we want to ask here within this institute is what, how can we treat and what is happening to the cancer stem cells themselves? And as, I, as I've outlined before, we may only be looking at perhaps 1% of the overall number of cells within the flask here. So how do we identify those cells? And ultimately, then how do we observe them, monitor them, and test them? Well, to do that, to isolate them, we use a really neat piece of kit. And that's in the room next door, and I'll take you through there now, and I'll show you how we isolate cancer stem cells from the rest of the tumor population. Hi, so we're back in the laboratory environment now, and I've brought the tumor cells that we've been growing in the primary cell culture suite into this laboratory. So what I've done is I've taken the tumor cells out of the flask where they were happily growing, and I've suspended them in this media in this tube. So what we're going to do now is we're going to try and separate or isolate the cancer stem cells away from the, what we call the bulk of the tumor cell population. So remember that cancer stem cells make up maybe only 1% of 
of the total number of cells within a tumour. So how do we separate that 1% away from the 99%? This is where this machine comes in handy. We use this machine to separate those two cell populations. So what we do is we insert this tube. Mark is currently just setting it up now and you'll see it operating. He'll insert a, pop, a, a suspension of cells into this receptacle and then once it's set up, that tube will go up into, inside the tube, a needle will come down and will suck up all of the tumour cells within the media. Once they've been sucked up, the, the machine then spits them back out through the needle into a droplet stream, a bit like a water fountain, as you can see here on the, uh, uh, in live imaging of the, on the computer screen. Here you'll see each individual droplet passing down across a laser point. And each individual uh, water droplet or media droplet contains an individual cancer cell. Now at this point we don't know whether it's a cancer stem cell or whether it's a bulk tumour cell. But what happens is the stream, as the droplets pass across the laser, the laser excites the fluorescent tags that we've used, we've incubated the tumour cells with prior to putting them into the machine. And these fluorescent tags are able to uh, attached to, specifically attached to, the cancer stem cells themselves. So if the laser detects a fluorescent cell, it detects that immediately, passes an electrostatic current across the droplet and pushes it into a different collecting tube. That process is very, very rapid. So we're able to, uh, to uh, analyze and sort 20,000 cells every second. So after a couple of minutes, we've been able to sort several million cells. And at the end of the process, after just a few minutes, we now have two tubes. One tube containing 99% of the bulk of the tumor, and one tube containing the 1% of the cancer stem cells. So why is that important? Well, now we can analyze these two populations very separately. We know that this tube is primarily uh, contains cancer stem cells. So we can look at them, we can test them at the molecular level, we can look at them under the microscope and try and understand the differences between these two cell types. That's fundamentally important for us to understand how cancer stem cells work. But also, of course, we can now start using experimental new drugs and test whether these experimental new drugs are able to hit the cancer stem cells or hit the bulk cells or both. So I'm going to take you through now to the microscope room where I'm going to be showing you cancer stem cells and bulk cells under the microscope once they've been sorted like this. So here we are in the microscope room and this is pretty much the end of the road now for the tumour tissues that we originally took from the uh, hospital donations this morning. So we've now isolated the cancer stem cells from the, the remaining bulk of the tumour and they are suspended in this uh, tube. So we pu would put those back down onto the um, uh, plastic flask that we had before so that they were lying flat on the plastic and then we can start to look at them with microscopy. So what might we want to do? We might want to see how these cells respond to experimental therapeutics. And the best way to do that would be to be able to watch them in real time or with time-lapse microscopy to see over time how they would respond. And we can do that with this piece of kit here. This is a, a time-lapse microscope with an environmental chamber. We can place the flask under the microscope here and this environmental chamber keeps the cells alive while we're both observing them and testing them for their responses to different therapeutics, for example. Alternatively, we could go back to the original tissues that we first were working with in the primary cell culture suite. We can take thin sections of those primary samples and we can just look at them under the microscope using standard microscope slides. And this is an example of a thin section through a pancreatic tumour where we can start to use the same tags that we were do it using to isolate the cancer stem cells in uh, the fax suite, we can use those same tags to um, identify, for example here in red, the cancer stem cells in the tumor tissues. Finally, we can take that a step further and we can take the same patient tissues that are on the microscope slides and using this microscope at the end we can use a laser to individually cut out cancer cells straight off the microscope slide 
cutting out individual tumour cells and then taking those back to the laboratory and doing biochemical assays on those individual cells. Again, looking at the difference between these cancer stem cells and non-stem cells. So that's the end of the story. That's pretty much where we get to at the end of the road with our cancer tissues. If you want to know anything more about the Institute or cancer stem cells, please visit our website. There's plenty of details online or visit us, um, find us on social media. Thanks for watching.